A very good morning and welcome to the morning glory service. This is a blessed day. I am so happy that the Lord has given us and has made this day that we all rejoice and be glad in it. The God is good. Our God is good indeed. And before we begin this day, let's pray. Blessed and everlasting Father, we praise you and we exalt you and we glorify you this beautiful morning. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for your cover over us in the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for making ways for us where there seems to be no ways. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our careers. We thank you for our businesses, Jehovah Lord. We thank you for covering us, oh Lord. We thank you for our family members and our friends. We thank you for this beautiful country. We thank you for the peace that surpasses all human understanding that you've given unto us, Lord. We thank you for the ways that you are making even if we don't know that you're making them. We thank you for all the diseases that you have healed even without our knowledge, Jehovah. We thank you for all the victories that you've granted us even when we didn't know that we are victors. We thank you, Jehovah, for making making us good and great, oh Lord. And we thank you right now, Jehovah, as we begin this morning, that you take precedence, Lord, that you be here and your Holy Spirit take charge of every single thing. May he help us in every single thing that we are going to do. And may everyone that comes out of my mouth praise you, exalt you, and glorify you. In all that I do, Jehovah, be glorified and exalted. This is the day that you have made, that we all shall rejoice and be glad in it. We praise you, we glorify you, we honor you, and we exalt you, Jehovah Lord. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Welcome and welcome once again. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. You should arise and shine, right? This is a beautiful and amazing and awesome day. It is the day that the Lord has made. No one else has made this day. No one else had seen this day. But he has made us and allowed us to see this wonderful day that we all shall rejoice. You know, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, rejoice. We're supposed to rejoice because the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? And I am super happy that you've allowed us to come into your sitting room, your space, and you're listening to Praise Chapel, a morning glory this day. And as we begin our morning, I would just like us to read from the book of Proverbs, verses 11, uh, chapter 28. And it says, uh, this is from the Message Bible, A life devoted to things is a dead life. A stamp. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. I'll go again. Proverbs chapter 11 verses 28 from the Message Bible. A life devoted to things is a dead life. A stamp. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. What an amazing way to start a day. If you devote your life to God, other than devoting your life, to things. I know most of the time we wake up in the morning and our devotion is the things we have, the worries, the anxieties, uh, the children going to school. We don't have time for God or we rush things, we sleep late, we wake up early to work on our things, all the things except work on our relationship with God. Here we are, we are being reminded in the book of Proverbs that we should devote our lives to God. Because in this, we shall be like a flourishing tree. As opposed to devoting our lives to things, we shall be dead like a stump. You know what death means? Really, you, you, you're walking, but you're dead. Dead spiritually, dead. And the fact, the, the moment that you, you, you're dead spiritually, all the other things die. All the other things die. If the God way, the vertical relationship is wrong, all the horizontal relationships are going to be wrong. Your relationship with your children are going to be wrong, with your friends, with your colleagues, with your spouse, with the people you meet, with strangers, with, with, with just every single person. You ever woke up one day and you're like, I'm just salty today. You know, the, things are not going well. I woke up on the wrong side of the foot. No, you don't wake up on the wrong side of your foot or the bed, I mean. You know, the left side of your foot or the left side of your bed, whichever one works for you. But most of the time, it's because we've been dead worried. We slept worrying about the things, what tomorrow will bring. And we are told not to worry. We be anxious for nothing. That we should not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of it, things. But what do we do every single day? We go to sleep worrying and wake up with the very same worry. 
because that's what goes on in our subconscious mind. We've not taken our issues and placed them in, on God's feet. And that is what we ought to do. And right now, I want us to take all that is worrying us, all that is weighing us down, and all that we love before the living God, so that we may live a flourish, like, I mean, a God-shaped life in a flour like a flourishing tree. Because I personally want to flourish, and I believe that you also want to flourish. So let's bow down and pray. Everlasting Father, you reign, Jehovah Lord. We thank you for your word this wonderful morning. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If we die in your love, Lord, I know that we are going to flourish. If we die in your word, we are going to flourish. If we die, O oh Lord, in your ways and meditate on the words that you were teaching us today, like you taught Joshua, we shall have a successful life. We would love to flourish in this land of the living, but we cannot flourish on our own accord, Lord. We call upon the Lord of Lords to help us flourish financially, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, and remove any forms of depression from our minds and hearts and our... And may you fill us with who you are, Lord. May we decrease even as you increase in us. May you fill us with your love, with your compassion, because you are a good God. You are a loving Father. You are a great Lord, and we love you because we know that you can do the impossible. You're the Lord of impossibles, Jehovah. So we raise up this morning, Lord, to say you're good and you're glorious and you're magnificent, and your word is alive and is working. It is more than a, it is more than a double-edged sword and it cuts both right and forth. May you cut anything in our lives that is not working and may you make us flourish like that tree, Jehovah. We would not want to live like the dead, but we want to live like we are alive because you came and gave us your life, the life of Christ. We believe that this day shall flourish. We shall walk and meditate in your word. We shall live by your precepts, O oh Lord. May you help us, may the Holy Spirit of the living God help us walk in the word of the living God and walk in the ways that God, only you who wants, and in the purpose-driven life, Jehovah. We pray, believing and trusting in the name of the blessed God. Amen and amen. Such a wonderful day to be alive. And I want to talk to us about just something that we will take our prayer positions and pray to God because he is our father and our friend and he's given us this day so that we may flourish and I want you to just catch that for me I want us to flourish in everything you know we we have to prosper because we love God we have a God who loves us to, who wants us to prosper and he loves seeing us prospering in all things even as our soul prospers may we prosper in health and in all things just like the apostle Paul says so right now I want us to tell to talk to God about a few things like I said we wake up every single morning with issues that are clouding our mind, clouding our thoughts, clouding our hearts, where the bills are going to I mean, the money for paying the bills, the school fees, you know, the medical fees, every single thing. You look right, left and center, the economic hassles, you look everywhere and people are crying, businesses are down, jobs are out, unreachable, friends are leaving us, people are depressed. We cry about a lot of things. We cry about a lot of things. Our families are people we don't, we call them toxic nowadays. Quite an absurd thing that we, we can, we have, we have come as a society to a place where we call one another toxic. But do we check our toxicity though? Do we know who we are? Maybe we are the toxic people and we are cutting people who are actually helping us. What makes you think your mother could be toxic? Maybe sometimes they are. Maybe you are. So we have different level of toxicities. But these are all things that if we bring them to God, all these toxicities, these are the things God wants. He came that we may have life and have it in abundance. The enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. So he has destroyed the family structure by calling us toxic and then allowing us to dismember our family members, you know, to not talk to ABCD to not talk to XYZ and also to isolate ourselves so that we be depressed to a point that we can take away our lives and even take away pe other people's lives and even our children's lives. I think you've seen in the news things that are happening nowadays. You would be so shocked that a whole family would perish because of things that could be talked out and they could, have, they could reach out to others for help and even to God Almighty. And this is what we are going to talk to today. Can we surrender the things that are ailing us to God? Is it too difficult to just say, God, I have this problem. Can I surrender it to you? 
So with that in mind, I want you to understand one thing, that we have a God who listens, a God who hears, a God who is almighty, a God who is the maker of heaven and earth, and he does not fail to do that which he has willed to do each and every day. He, has, he, 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 he woke you up today. He knows that there's a purpose for you today. Why take your life away? He woke your children up today. They, he knows that they have a purpose for this day. So God created you. You are not a useless person. My plea for you today is to surrender that which is weighing you. If it is family, if it is the toxicity we are talking about, there is a place where you can lay the toxic family members, where you can lay yourself as a toxic person, where you can lay your depression, where you can lay your marital issues, where you can lay your financial issues. Because all of us have different issues. Where you can lay your economic issues, that is at the feet of Jesus. We can lay, we can take the total surrender and bring all these things to his presence. Because he cares for me and you. He is our lover. Nothing, he says no, nothing, not principalities, not angels, not, not life, not death. You know, not things in the future, not even things in the present. Can separate us from the love of God. He loves us too much that he ensures that he sends people your way so that you're brought back to God, so that you're not depressed, so that they speak to you the word of God. You know, God loves you and I too much that he would not want you to lose your life to death, you know, to, to death that, you know, suicide to murder. He loves us too much. Not even, forget about death. You can, you can also die and you're still alive. Your spiritual death. If that dies like I said, all the other areas automatically dies, even if you're alive. So why not come to this beautiful God, this amazing Father, this everlasting Father, this merciful God who has, he, he, he gives his mercies to a point that he says, my mercies are new each day. I'm quoting, that is God saying, his mercies are new each day. God's mercies are new every single day. Every time it is midnight, his mercies are new. He does not renew the other ones. And today they are new and fresh masses for you. Why can't we just bask on these masses and just surrender the things that we have, the issues that we have, the ailments that we are battling with and tell him, God, I know I have been battling this, but I can't do it by myself. I need you to be in this. God does not come, does not force himself to you. You could be depressed, but he's not. he knows you, he feels you, but he's not going to force himself on you. He is a God of order. He is a God of purpose. He is a God who loves you regardless. But he will wait for you to call upon him. You remember Jeremiah 33? 3? Call upon me and I will answer you. You know, it's a two-way traffic. It's a relationship. You have to call upon him if you need him. And then he will come. And when he comes, when he comes, there is peace of mind that surpasses all understanding. He is promised that he is peace of mind surpasses all human understanding. That's just it. When you call upon him, when you put it in prayer and in petition and with thanksgiving, he is saying, he's promising that I'll give you the peace that surpasses all understanding and it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. How much more would you want peace? I know most of the time we, we, we go and say peace be still and then we don't mean it. No. Today I want you to surrender that thing. And tell God, God, I am done trying this alone. I am done doing life alone. I cannot do it alone. I am done doing finances alone. I can't do it alone. I need you to come into this. I am done doing family alone. But I need you. I need you to hold my hand. I need you to order my steps so that I can walk in your righteous right ways. Because he is willing. He is willing. And his promises are yea and amen. He is willing even right now as we speak when you just call upon him. He shall answer you. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we call upon you this wonderful morning because you told us when we call upon you, Jehovah Lord, you are righteous enough and faithful enough to answer us. We are banking on your faithfulness because you're faithful even when we are faithless. Forgive us for the times that we've run to other people to help us. Forgive us for all the times that we've thought that our jobs will be the ultimate help. Forgive us for all the times that we thought the economy or the president or the leaders of this country would be our refuge. Lord, we want to say that you are our refuge. You are our one defense. You are our strong tower. 
you are our all in all, Jehovah. May you take your rightful place in our lives, Jehovah. We surrender our ailments, Lord, this beautiful morning. Whoever is listening to this message this morning and he is ailing or she is ailing, I surrender them to you, Lord, that you may speak that, speak to them, oh Lord, that these ailments may go. May they know that you are a God who can do anything and the impossibles, oh Lord, you make them possible. By man, it is impossible. But with you, Lord, it is possible. There is possibility in flourishing. There is possibility in getting back to our feet economically. There is possibility in healing that marriage. There is possibility in healing those wayward children. There is possibility in making things greater and better. There is possibility of changing our, our lives around because you are God and you are mighty and we bank on you because you are everlasting to everlasting. Your mercies are new each day. You are a faithful God. May you hide us in the secret place of the Most High. May you hide us and comfort us in your love. May your kindness and mercies be upon us. May you engulf us, O oh Lord, in your love. And above all, Jehovah, may you cleanse our minds and our hearts, that your peace be still in our businesses, that your peace be still in our homes, that your peace be still in our workplaces, that your peace be still in this country, that your peace be still in our hearts and in our minds, that we continue meditating upon your word. Oh Lord, and may you help us increase our faith in you because Lord, we want to trust in you. We want to trust in you, Jehovah. We do not have chariots to trust in. Some may trust in chariots, Jehovah. Some may even trust in horses. But we want to say today that we trust in the name of the living God because you're perfect and you're powerful and you are almighty, you are great and you are Jehovah Rapha. There's nothing impossible with you, Lord. So we bless this day and we surrender everything unto you, Lord. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. So I want to bring to your attention or to our attention this wonderful Bible verse. I find it intriguing and I'll read it. This is the book of Joshua. Chapter 24, verses 15, and it says, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here Joshua was talking to the children of Israel. And telling them, you know, they had, they had prostituted with other gods, worshipped other gods in other terms. And Joshua was, this, this was kind of fed up kind of story. Like, Mimi, I am choosing to worship the Lord. You choose for yourself. Like he gave them, he told them, please, I think I've had enough of you worshipping idols. I've had enough of you doing this and that. But today I want you, I want you to choose between that which is evil and God. And I don't care what you're going to choose today. Like we have said that when we trust in the name of the living God, there are things that will work in us. When we ensure that our vertical relationship, the relationship with God is fine, himself will work out things. It may take time. Yes, it will. Because God has his own timing. We cannot um, twist God to work in the things that he works. So most of the time that is what we do. We want to um, twist him. We want to, God, I want this thing this way. But he knows the things that he has for you, the plans that he has for you. Plans for you to prosper and plans for future, not plans to harm you. Most of the time, the plans we, we have for ourselves are plans to harm us. He looks, he knows the, the end from the beginning. So he looks at our end and he's like, if I give Anik this plan, it is going to be her end. And I would not like her to be her end. This will not make her accomplish the purpose that I made her for. So I am going to make sure that this tarries. And if I give it to her now, she will... She will drop salvation. That is not what God wants us to do. There are things that maybe you've prayed for and you're on that waiting phase. Still continue praying. Continue. See, do not cease praying. Continue praying. God in his right time, he shall come. He shall come. He is the relational God. That I know. And here Joshua is trying to tell these people, the Israelites. And today, I am also urging us because by faith, we are all his children and we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and called sons unto God. So ye sons of God, today it's your time. Are you choosing evil over God? But I have decided that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my job, we will serve the Lord. I think God wants us to come to this point that whether he's answering those prayers or not, 
he is still God. That whether he is going to heal you or not, he is still God. Whether he is going to provide school fees for your children or not, he is still God. That whether wrong things, you are going to lose a loved one or not, he is still God. He will forever reign. And we are not going to tell God how to be God. Our position is the position of prayer and asking and thanking him and supplications. You can take all the worries to him. He has accepted everything. But he promises a lot of things in that. That if you trust me, blessed is the man who trusts me and who puts his hope in me. Blessed is the man who walks in his ways. You know, blessed is the man who does not have a double mind. You think today you are in the evil places and tomorrow you are, you, 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 you you, you split your, your faith. You're like, today I can go to the world and then the next day I think God can handle this. Siku nyingine, you, you, you mean at your friend's place, you're like, this one my friends can handle. This one is not a good issue. But God wants us to take to prayer everything. You remember that hymn? Take it to the Lord in prayer. He's a friend. He's a friend. He's a father. He is merciful. He is loving. He just wants you. Not that he doesn't know. He is supreme. He knows everything happening in your life. He knows. And even your end, he does know. He created all of us before the foundation of this world. So he knows everything that is happening. He knows our end from the beginning. If he knows all these things, what he wants is one thing. Can we trust God today with our issues? Can we surrender those issues today and tell God, God, I have tried as a human being, but I cannot do it anymore. And I know that you are the way, the truth, and life. That is it. He is the way, the truth, and life. Where there is no way, he makes ways. Where we are lost, he helps us to come back. And he is the truth. And the truth is, he is the savior and he gives eternal life. And he can do not only what we can imagine. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can imagine or think of. So today I'm introducing us to God in a different level. Can we depend on God even when our answers are not there or are not yet there? Or when we, what we see or what we look at is all darkness. But He's the light. He's the light of the world. He is. I beseech you that today that you make a way for him in all things in your life. So let's bow and pray for surrender. Blessed Jehovah Lord, we thank you for your word, Jehovah. Today I know, Lord, that we have believed in other prophets. We have believed in prophets. We have run and rushed to things that didn't give us hope, the things that made us hopeless, gave us depression, you know, broke our heart. We've rushed to them if we ought to have rushed and when we ought to have rushed to you. Lord Jesus, today we are surrendering back to you, that our lives belong to you, that our salvation belongs to you. We cannot work it out without you, that our children belongs to you, that our spouses belongs to you, that our jobs and our economy belongs to you. We surrender this country to you, Lord. We surrender our lives to you. We surrender our going out and our coming in, our lying down and our waking unto your lives, unto your holy hands, Lord, because you're perfect in this place. We glorify you and we honor you, Jehovah. Forgive us for all the times that we did not surrender fully, for all the times that we left things at your cross or at your feet and we took them back again and carried loads of heaviness. Today we want to release every heavy laden thing and we release them unto you, Lord. Or at the cross, Lord, that is where you cleanse, you took everything. So we are bringing them back to the cross. Our anxieties, our worries, our depression, our finances, our economy, our country, our leaders, our churches, our church leaders. Lord, we bring them unto you, our children, our schools, Jehovah. You are the healer, Lord. You are the game changer. May you change us to your liking. May you change us to walk in your purpose and your will. May you help us become the best versions of, you, of ourselves for the purpose that you've made us for, Lord. 
we thank you and we glorify you. And may you make us serve you. And today we say that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my mind, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my knowledge, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my time, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my children, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my entire generation, we will serve the Lord. We bring them unto your holy hands, Lord. May you create us anew. You are the porter, Lord. You are God and you're faithful. May you make us great. May you make us, may you cleanse us of us, of wickedness, of depression, of idolatry. And may we, Lord, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. And I also love this, this verse that says, then Elijah, this is from 1 Kings, verses 18, sorry, 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 21, and it says, Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people did not answer a word. Yeah. Today, for how long are you going to waver between two opinions? Are you going to be like the children of Israel when Prophet Elijah and the prophets of Baal were at a contest at Mount Carmel? And he told them, until when are you going to waver between two opinions, between two gods? Why are you going to be a double-minded person? Because even God detests someone who's double-minded. He's like, you, you, you're, not, you, you, you're just wavering. Someone who, has, who cannot make up his mind is not a friend to God. God wants people who makes up their minds. If you're going to follow God, follow God. If you're going to follow Baal's prophets, follow Baal's prophet. So today, this is my question. For how long are you going to ever between two opinions? But I tell you, as for me and myself, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my reputation, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my church, we will serve the Lord. I hope that becomes your verse for today, that you would not waver between two opinions, that you will not be like the, the people who supported Baal's prophets, the prophets of Baal, sorry, and they would, they would cut themselves with stone that Baal would answer their prayers. They cried, they wailed, they called on the name of Baal, but he did not come through. Baal did not answer. Are you still wavering between two opinions? Worshipping a God of the world, a God who is dead. Worshipping people, worshipping your friends, worshipping your finances maybe, worshipping your children, as opposed to worshipping the God of gods. Sometimes you won't even know you're worshipping other gods. You think until someone declares that I am a devil worshipper or an atheist, that's when you think someone, someone is worshipping another God. But sometimes whatever we do with our lives, whatever we do with, with our time, shows who we worship. How much time do you give to God in reading his word, in prayer, in meditating? I bet you know, I, I bet you're, you're like, no, 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 you, you didn't have to go that way. But yes, I am going that further. Because I don't want us to waver in two opinions. If you are going for God, go full throttle. If you are going to be a Baal's supporter, you don't have to waver between two opinions. But I'm telling you that me, for me today, as for me and my life, we will serve the Lord. And I believe, and I want you to believe this, that you can also say this for yourself. Just like Joshua said, I want to partner with Joshua today to speak on our behalf that as for me and our families, we will serve the Lord. As for me and myself, we will serve the Lord. And as for me and everything that belongs to me, we will serve the living God. That is the word of God today. We shall serve the Lord. And I believe that from today, you're not going to waver between two opinions. Where you take your money, where you take your time. You know, time is equal to life. If you don't give God any time to talk to you through his word, through prayer and meditation, maybe you should check or recheck who you worship. Is it TikTok or social media? Some of us fall in that category. And I would say so because this time, ICT has become a challenge. We wake up and we're on Facebook, on TikTok, and every other social media platform. But 
on the platform that is the most important. Accept the platform of the living God. So today I want us to be on the platform of the living God. And seriously be on the platform of God because that is the best platform ever. If that platform is if that platform, the God platform is okay, these other social media platforms are all okay because you will you will interact with other people nicely. You know you 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 you'll have great topics to talk about. You'll have nice people coming your way. Even if they're not nice, you'll know how to treat the people who are salty and people who are angry and people who are depressed. You will know and be courageous that you serve the living God. And let us pray. Blessed Father, we bless you for your word today. That we should not waver between two opinions. Jehovah Lord, we we are sorry for all the times that we wavered between two opinions whether to worship you or worship other things that we've been, we've been worshiping. We've been worshiping our cars, our possessions, our children, our spouses, even the social media platforms. We've worshiped other things, but we've not worshiped you. We've not accorded you the time that you really you really need, Lord. May you grant us your forgiveness. May you cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ that we may want, we may we may yearn to know you in a deeper level or at a deeper level that we may go in for you and not waver between two opinions because we don't want to be left somewhere or behind serving idols serving things that would not answer serving prophets or serving Baal who would not answer cutting our bodies losing our lives for Baal for fame for insanity for depression lord we pray that you heal us from inside out we pray that you heal our emotions. We pray that you heal our body, you heal our blood, you heal our cells to a level that we worship you in truth and in spirit. We pray that you be upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that us, for these people who are listening to me and myself, we will serve the living God. And today we walk out of this place saying, as for me this day, as for me, and all who are watching me this wonderful time, we will serve the Lord and will not waver in two opinions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen and amen. Amen. We've come to the end of our service this beautiful morning. And thank you so much for keeping it, keeping up with me this day. And I am so happy and so blessed that you've taken your time to listen to the word of God. And I believe that from today, we are going to serve the living God wholeheartedly and without wavering between two opinions. Thank you so much. And you can now worship uh, the Lord with your gifts and offerings. They'll be on your screen. And also this beautiful day, we are going to have our service at Praise Chapel Church. And this service is, this is a turning point. Service begins at, seven, at uh, 5.30 o'clock. So you are welcome. Praise Chapel is located opposite Agakan Hospital, Mombasa, along General Madenge Road. You're welcome and feel at home. So today, may the Lord bless all of us. May we walk in the ways that pleases the Lord. And may God cover us in the blood of Jesus Christ. May, you, may the Holy Spirit help us walk and help us do that which the Lord only wants. I pray this, that this day is blessed. And this day is blessed and blessed indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen and amen.